right, as we pick up in chapter three here for algebra two, we are working with systems of equations. This time we're gonna get away from graphing. So that's gonna make you a little bit more excited about these. Uh, and we're gonna use a couple of methods that you learned in algebra one. So the very first one is just simply dealing with substituting. So what does it mean to have a substitute? Well, here at school, that means that I wasn't in or whatever teacher wasn't in. So this somebody else sat in there. It's used a lot in sports. Uh, use the example, everybody uh, is a big fan of uh, LeBron James, right? He doesn't play the whole game. There's a substitute for him. The only difference in math here is that when we substitute in math, uh, it has to be equal, right? So uh, it doesn't matter how good the substitute is for LeBron James. Right? The Lakers just aren't going to be the same if he's not out there playing. That doesn't mean that I like LeBron or I don't like LeBron. It's just a fact, right? Uh, just like in class, it wouldn't exactly be the same thing if I wasn't there to go through some problems and uh, answer your questions. All right, so what we want to do as we look at these is we definitely want to be looking for uh, getting some variable, either x or y, right? I want to get that alone. Okay, and that's going to lead into some of our steps over here. Okay, we want to isolate one variable. in one of the equations. So what is it, what's that mean? It means when I look at these equations, I'm kind of looking around and saying, I see 4x, I see 3y, I see 2x, I see 1y, okay? So the thing that seems really helpful to me is to have this 1y. Uh, so that means in this bottom equation, I really wanna focus on getting that equation solved for y. So I might subtract 2x to get rid of that, and then I'm gonna divide by negative one so I'm gonna get this whole thing flipped around. So finally get y equals two x minus seven, right? And that's kind of important. So I've done the first step. I isolated one variable for one equation. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute that in. So I know that y is equal to this. So where I have y in the other equation, I'm gonna squeeze this equation right in here to see what happens. So now I get 4x plus 3 in place of y. I now know y is equal to 2x minus 7, and it equals 4. Right? So that's going to be our second step over here as we scroll over. We're going to isolate one variable, and then we're going to substitute. Right? What should I do after this? Well, now we're going to solve for the single variable. Okay, So I know I'm doing something right because I now have a single variable, it's all in terms of x. So here we go. Distribute 4x plus 6x minus 21 equals 4. 10x, they are like terms. I'm gonna add 21 while I'm doing this. So 10x is equal to 24, oh, 20, 25, check that. And divide by 10. So x turns out to be 2.5. All right, well, that's awesome but it doesn't give me the whole answer. Remember we're looking for is 2.5 is paired with what number? Where on the coordinate plane do they cross? So what should I do? Step four, I wanna substitute. Where can I put this in? That's why I put this thing in a box over here. So I need two times 2.5. All right, so think about money. If you had $2.50 twice, how much money would you have? You're right, that's $5. So Y turns out to be negative two negative two, right? So that was the last step over here. We'll bounce your screen over one more time. And then we're gonna solve for the other variable. Okay, the second variable. All right, so these steps here, they're very, very generic, but that's because each equation is gonna be different. What's gonna be the easiest thing to solve for? So using substitution, when we get something alone, in this case, y, once I know what y is, we're gonna substitute that in. So, I know I'm doing something right in this line right here because everything was in terms of x. Okay, so that's how we know that we're doing something really good. After that, we can solve, we sub back in, and that's why I drew a box around this equation over here. Right? It wasn't a final answer, but it was very, very helpful to have. Could I use an original? Absolutely. All right, let's try that again. And the second one, hopefully solving for one variable seems relatively simple. Right, so I have uh, whatever choice I want here. So typically I have a lot of students want to subtract X because we're used to saying Y equals MX plus B. So that's totally up to you. So now what I know, 
I know that y is the same thing as negative x minus 12. So here it is. I'm going to use parentheses all the time with this to show where I'm going to substitute it in. Okay, so in place of y, I've now put in negative x minus 12, right? Because we subtracted x to the other side. So I'm going to distribute. I'll be very careful here. 2x, this is negative negative, so it's plus 3x. This is negative negative, so it's plus. And 3 times 12 would be 36. So I get 5x. Let's get rid of that 36 while we're doing this step. So 5x turns out to be negative 30. And we'll divide by 5. So x turns out to be whoop, not negative 5, just 5. Negative 6. All right, so here's what I know so far. x is negative 6. And now what we have to do is plug that back in. So I'm going to take this 6, plug it in for x right here. So I have negative, negative 6, minus 12. So you see why I'm using all these parentheses to show the substitution and what's happening? Because this could get very confusing. But negative, negative 6 is positive 6 minus 12. So y also turns out to be negative 6. So we get both of those things. All right, so with all this process, we're going to give you a lot of freedom. Uh, you could have done the whole thing by solving for x and subtracting the y. Um, you know, but depending on what you do, and the reason I bring that up is take a look at our third problem here today. All right, so my hope is that we're all really focused on this bottom equation. Uh, but then I hope you hesitate just for a second. So do I want to divide by 4? Because it seems to be the easiest thing to do. Or do you want to divide by 8 because you really like having y by itself? Well, what happens if I divide by 8? I get 4 over 8, which is 1 half. That's not a terrible fraction, but I think I'd rather divide by 4 so I can say that x equals 2y. Right? That way I don't have to deal with that at all. all right, so in the beginning, I have that choice. So make good choices. Uh, if you start dealing with 1 half, that's fine. Just work through it. Okay, so now x is replaced with 2y. So 7 times 2y plus another 2y equals negative 8. Uh, 14y plus 2y equals negative 8. So now I have 16y equals negative 8. Now remember over here we said we had a choice on what we could do. I don't have a choice now, right? Because we're solving. So I just want to divide by 16. So y is negative 1 half. So I do have all of that going on. So we're going to plug that back in right here. So negative 1 half of 2 will give me x. Well, half of 2 is 1, so it's negative 1. Again, probably could have done the whole thing the other way around, but I just think it's easier to work with 2 than it is 1 half. All right, what's it mean to eliminate? Right? What do students tell me all the time? That means to get rid of something. Right? So that's exactly what we mean. Uh, we want to remove something. We want to remove or get rid of, in this case, x or y. All right, so we're going to start looking, instead of all over the place, we're going to look vertically. Right? So can I make 2 into 4 or 4 into 2 easily? Or is it easier to make 3 and 2 the same thing? Well, I hope that you remember from Algebra 1, it's going to be a whole lot easier to make 2 into 4. Okay. And many of you also remember that not only do I want to do that, but I want to make them opposites. So I'm going to multiply this by negative 2. So I get negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 10. Right? So that was just simply distributing right here. And I'm going to bring this other equation over. So I get 4x plus 2y equals 3. And now what I do is I add these together. So negative 4x and positive 4x, they have been eliminated. That's what we were after. So now I have negative 6y plus 2y is negative 4y, and it equals, here we had negative 10 plus 3. So that's negative 7. Well, that's kind of a mess, isn't it? Divide by negative 4, and that's what we got. We have 7 fourths for the y value. All right, now we also talked about you had some choices here. Now this is the answer, all right? I'm not messing with you. So do I want to take 7 fourths and multiply it by 3? Or do I want to take 7 fourths because this is the y value multiplied by 2? Now my hope is that you said 2 because that gets it to be a little bit more manageable. Oh, equals 3. So we're going to substitute that in the way we were doing previously. 
So now we have 4x. Now we have 14 over 4. Okay, so I'm not going to use it that way. I'm going to call it 7 halves. I'm not even going to use that. I'm going to say it's 3 and a half, and it equals 3. And we're going to subtract 3 and a half to both sides. So now we have 4x equals negative 1 half. All right, now we're going to divide that by 4. So one thing that I know we, uh, we often need a quick reminder of is what's happening here. So if I had one half and I want to divide that amongst four people, that means it's going to get even smaller. Okay. So if I write it horizontally, remember it looked like this. And now it's going to be times one fourth. So that means our answer is negative one eighth. All right, and all this was to get the x value. So we had negative one eighth and positive seven fourths as the intersection of these two lines. Aren't you glad we didn't have to find this one exactly by graphing? I know I am. All right, so remember the whole thing started with looking back and saying, I can make two and four the same number, or in this case, opposites, really easy. All I have to do is multiply the whole thing by negative two. All right, one thing you run into in science class just to get a little bit of a carryover is these decimals. So what you do in science class is often you multiply by 10. Okay, so that would help make this situation better, right? Because then I can make those both into ones. Okay, in the rest of the world, what you do is you have quarters and you're trying to make $1. So you have a choice here. Do you want to multiply by four or do you want to multiply by 10? And either way works, guys. It really doesn't matter. Okay, for the sake of right now, I'm thinking about money. So I'm going to multiply by 4. Yep, and I hear you. You're saying, hey, can't we just multiply by negative 4? Absolutely. So I'm going to get negative x, right? Because that's 4 times a quarter. That's right. Now I have minus 0.4y equals negative 16. I'm going to bring over the other equation, x plus y equals 31. Right, this is what we wanted. These guys here, they're going to cancel out. So I get no x's at all. I get 0.6y equals, we got here 15 left over, right? All right, know what you're thinking. Hey, you got a trick for this? Sure. 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is actually what? 6 tenths. That's actually what? 3 fifths. So this is 3 fifths of y equals 15. So how do you get rid of that? You multiply by 5 thirds. You're like, hey, that wasn't extremely helpful. Well, sure it is. That's 15 divided by 3 is 5. So y turns out to be 15. All right, now, if I was a gambling man, what I would say is you're all going to use this bottom equation to sub it back in to get the other one. Now, some of you might just be spiteful and say, nope, I'm going to use the other one but go ahead, that's up to you. All right, so the y value turned out to be 15. So that's what we're solving for x now. All right, so we got 16, 15, okay? Ordered pair. All right, what do we got? All right, normally this would be an exit pass. Um, we don't really do too much with those. So let's, uh, let's take a look and put it right onto the lesson here. So a couple things that I want you to think about, because you've done this in Algebra 1. You're now an Algebra 2 student, so you're a rock star at it. All right, you will be. We'll keep practicing that. Uh, but one thing we definitely don't like is it don't want to have a fraction in here, right? So let's go ahead and multiply this by 2, and that's going to fix that. And that just gives us a better bearing on what we're going to do with it. So it means I'll get x minus 6y equals 16. Right? And like I said, you're an Algebra 2 student now. So one thing I want you to look at is 2, 6, and 14. And instead of multiplying this thing up, right, because now I have 1x and I'm trying to make it 2x, how about I do this? Let's take this and multiply it by negative 1 half because that'll give me those different signs. Okay, so this is pretty advanced thinking. Uh, we really want to think about what we're doing before we do it. Okay, so half of 2 is 1. That's what we wanted. Then I'm going to change the sign. Half of 6 is 3, and I'm going to change the sign. And half of 14 is 7, and change the sign. All right, look how nice that works out. And it wasn't extremely difficult. All I had to do is think about 
what I wanted to do before I just started writing things down. Okay, we're gonna get rid of x. I get negative nine y and I got positive nine. Look at that, y turns out to be negative one. We need to divide by that negative nine. All right, which equation? What do you think? Right, it really doesn't matter. Um, a lot of kids just because the fraction, right? They're not gonna go there. Uh, so just trying to lead by what I normally see, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in to the top equation, even though the numbers are a little bit greater. All right, so six and negative one becomes negative six. We're gonna add six, so that'll give me 20 and divide out by the two, so x turns out to be 10. So 10 comma negative one. Remember everything we've had so far today had one solution. So that means we call it consistent independent. And that's where we'll pick up in class.